Hi, this is Lori Johnson with Hancock Whitney Bank, and you're listening to Local Leaders, the podcast. Visit localleaderthepodcast.com for previous episodes or for information on appearing on the show. Welcome back to another episode of Local Leaders, the podcast. And joining us today, we have Dr. Celeste DiCarlo of Louisiana Eye Care. So first, welcome to Local Leaders, the podcast. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Now today, I want to cover all the amazing things that Louisiana Eye Care does for their patients. But first, we want to learn a little bit about you and how you uh, came to own the business and and uh, your history in the business. You have a long history there. Uh, and we'll start with where you were born and raised. So where were you born and raised? So I'm born and raised in Baton Rouge. Yes. Yep. And I went to St. Michael's High School. So yep. I spent all of my time there and even went to LSU for undergrad. Yes. And you met your husband actually at LSU. I did. And yeah. your husband is also a doctor? He's an endodontist. Endodontist. So he's a dentist that specializes in root canals. At some point, you ended up going to optometry school. I did in Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis. Yep. Awesome. Uh, blues capital of the world, I think. Or some good barbecue. Yeah. Oh, yummy barbecue over there. Very. Yes, indeed. So, how was that? Tell me about that experience after college. It was good. So my, I was dating my husband at the time, or my husband now at the time, but he was in dental school in New Orleans and I was in Memphis. So I would travel back a good bit, but when he would come visit, we would have some barbecue. Yeah. But the optometry school there was great. So I enjoyed my time there. Yeah. And y'all were working hard. I mean, uh, you're in, you're in a upper level school. He's in an upper level school as far as education is concerned. And, and, uh, yet you made it work. Studying and driving up and down (laughs) I-55. Yes, indeed. That is such a wonderful drive too down I-55. So much to just easy. see. Uh-huh. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, you had a, uh, the last time I saw you, I mean, I don't know how to say this any better than you were pregnant yes, <laughs> and now you are not. <laughs> yeah. So. so yes, we had our first baby. He's the third. So it's Vincent Dominic DiCarlo, the third, and he's 11 weeks old. 11 yeah, weeks. Yeah. We took him to his first football game two weekends ago. He did great. Oh, LSU football. really? Mm-hmm, At, for the Arkansas game. So that would be nine weeks old. Or yeah. So. Yeah. Or so. Mm-hmm. Wow. And he's been tailgating a few times, but he does great. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's pretty awesome. I, Starting that early. I can remember when I was young, 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 but not that young. That's, uh, he's going to have purple and gold in his, in, uh, it's a he. We hope so. Yeah. He, yeah. yeah. We hope so. <laughs> yeah. He's definitely going to have them in his veins for sure. Now, uh, as we mentioned, um, you attended optometry school and you actually did two externships mm-hmm. uh, while you were there prior to graduating. Yes. So the last year you do two externships away. So I did both of mine in New Orleans, one at a large ODMD clinic. So optometrist and ophthalmologist together in Metairie and the other at Oshner in gotcha. Metairie. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. And, and I would imagine those were extremely beneficial to what you're doing now. Yes. It, yeah. It's good to get like a range of experience in different clinical settings. So it was definitely very um, educational for sure. Yeah. hundred percent. And you finally graduate. Yeah. <laughs> At some point, and you move back to Baton Rouge with your husband after he finishes a residency in right. New Orleans, right? Yes. Okay, so uh, you started working. You kind of went out in the working world, and you you worked for your mother, uh, and you also worked for another lady, mm-hmm. and I'm going to say her name, so Ava Lamondola. Ava Lamondola, yes. In she, Gonzales. She's in Gonzales, and I've learned a ton from her. Um I guess personally and professionally as a just as a business and as an optometrist, she's she was great to learn from. Yeah, and and it goes without mentioning. Okay, so your mother is Dr. Cynthia Baker, yes. who has a a long reputation here in Livingston Parish. She does I think since eighty five? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's thirty five years. Yes. Uh, I believe before she. Uh, eventually sold the business to you that uh, that she was in business here in Livingston Parish. Yes, and so, she's, she's still seeing patients. I don't know that she'll ever stop. She loves it. Yeah. Yes. So <laughs> let me ask you this. Uh, 
and it's interesting to point out that Dr. Lamandola actually was another eye care clinic. So um, Accent Eye Care, yes. is, was it? Yes. Okay, so you've got, you're working for your mother and you're mm-hmm. working for Dr. Lamandola. Yes. And they both have eye clinics. Two things intrigue me about that. Number one, apparently y'all all get along kind of. Honestly, optometry is great. It's such a small world and everybody is very like happy to help everyone. I don't really no think there's any throats. competition. <laughs> no. It's so fun. We even have, you know, at our society meetings they're usually pretty entertaining. It, yeah. everybody really enjoys getting together. Very so, good. Yeah, and it's al- great. also something that intrigued me about that was your um your mother had you work for somebody else, right? <laughs> yeah. So A lot of, you'll find this interesting, but a lot of people that I've sat in this chair that own businesses that had children that went into the business, Mm -hmm. some of them made their kids work for somebody else first. And the reason they did that was they wanted them to know what it's like to work for someone other than mom and dad. Yes. And when I lived in New Orleans, I actually worked at the LASIK Vision Institute and I worked for a company that goes around and does eye exams at nursing homes. Yeah. So I feel like I got a little bit of the corporate experience at both of those places as well. So it's just been nice to have the range of of what all you can do as an optometrist 100 percent. and you worked for a retirement or you worked with older people and that probably gave you a lot of experience of working with older people right because it's different than than maybe working with a younger generation yes so so another uh I would say huge beneficial thing to doing business with you guys is the fact that you have experience doing that, working with those older well, folks. Thank you. Yeah, we enjoy the range of range of ages that we see, six months till till forever. So. 100%. Great. Another thing I wanted to point out with that is these are both business women that you worked for. Um, as a business woman now that owns her own business, how beneficial was it to learn from those two ladies? I I think it's been great. So growing up, you know, people will ask me, you know, about my mom when she was in optometry school. I think she was just one of maybe like 10 women in the school. And she'll tell you that she wasn't welcome. It was mostly males. But growing up, I've just never thought anything of it. It's just kind of normal to me. Um, And so that's been great. But definitely they're both very influential. And I would say my mom, you know, kind of like a trailblazer. Oh, yeah. um, And starting her own, owning her own practice. So it has been great to have them as examples. Yeah. People often forget that it would, you know, (laughs) as bizarre as it is, it wasn't uh, uh, too long ago that women didn't even have the right to vote. I mean, you know, (laughs) it, 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 it blows my, you know, when I think about it, but uh, it wasn't that long ago and it's absolutely insane. And now they're owning business, successful businesses. And, mm-hmm. and, uh, it was people like your mother that, that kind of, uh, trailblazed a lot of that. Not that this, she's that old, I'm not saying that, <laughs> but she, uh, definitely was ahead of her time as far as she, things like yes, that. Absolutely. Um, so as we mentioned, um, you're the daughter of Cynthia Baker, uh, who had a thriving business here, as you mentioned, since 1985. As a matter of mm-hmm. fact, it wasn't in the location it is now in 1985. Where was it Correct. at originally? Um, in the shopping center next to the Office Depot. Yeah, so mm-hmm. that's, that's uh, I'm not sure when it moved from there. I do kind of remember it there. Right. I know she graduated in 83, and I think she's always, always been in denim. Um, always on range. I always believe. on range. Yeah. Yes. Um, from your perspective, having grown up in this, um, mm-hmm you saw it every day, right? You, you wake up, you see optometry, you get to sleep, you see optometry. Um, did you always want to be an optometrist? I didn't. So I grew up going to the office mostly when I was sick, when you yeah. couldn't go to school. Sure. So I'd have like a little, a little cot in the back office. And so I wouldn't say that those were the best memories, <laughs> um, but it's pretty funny to have those memories now. And honestly, optometry has changed so much over the years that it has changed from, you know, what she started doing in 85 until what it is now, but she's always been very involved in advocacy. So it's been nice to see her like advance the profession. Yeah. And so as it's changed, I guess I have realized that optometry is, you know, pretty neat and it's a a wide scope of things that we do. So I started in college. I was pre-pharmacy, always liked science and math. And I guess that might be a genetics thing. Yeah. Um, But I didn't think I wanted to do the same thing as my mom. And then as I was working with with her in high school and in college, I realized, you know, this is actually a great career. And I like being able to spend time with patients and not just in an operating room. Um, So I really liked those relationships. And that's what really drew me into optometry. 
Yeah, very yeah. good. And and you love it going through your questionnaire. I mean, it's one of the things you continually mention is uh, it's kind of all about the patients with mm-hmm. you and the relationships that you build with those patients. Yes. Very important to what you do there. Now, it, also in your questionnaire, I asked you to name someone who had been a large influence on you. And you, of course, said your mom. Uh, <laughs> it, you know, I was blown away by how you answered it. So I want to, I'm going to try to quote you without jacking this okay. up too much. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you basically said, my mom has had the biggest influence on me, not just as an optometrist, but as a person. She has poured into me in my education all my life. And it's worked hard to give me opportunities to get me where I am today. Her love and dedication to this profession was always something I admired. And her love and compassion for her patients, the people of Livingston Parish, was something I desired to have in my career, too. I desired to have a profession that I loved, a profession where I never dreaded a day of coming to work. And she inspired me in more ways than one. I'm so thankful she has given me the opportunity to carry on our family legacy and the practice she built from the ground up. She really created her legacy in the optometry world, and now I have an amazing legacy to follow. But she has also given me the opportunity to create my own period that was amazing and very well said <laughs> and you use the word legacy in there a lot it really is what it is and and uh, just a great tribute from a daughter to her mother right yes very thankful all of like our education lives I feel like she has just made every step of the way possible but it is very nice to also follow in her footsteps with with optometry 100 percent. now at some point you started you know you're working there you're rocking and rolling and you're thinking you know, I'd like love to buy this, <laughs> this nice, uh, established uh, eye care clinic. And uh, you talked to your mother about that at some point, I would imagine. Kind of tell me how that transpired, how it yeah, went from... I, I always said that, like, um, her office growing up, like, it just meant so much to her. It was kind of like, almost like, you know, her baby. She just, like, loved the business and loved the practice. So I never really imagined her being ready to to sell it any time soon. If you know my mom, you know, she's, like, very young and enthusiastic. And yes. she doesn't seem anywhere near ready to retire, which right. she's definitely not. And she looks like 35. Um, yes. She don't look nowhere near, exactly. you know, 40 or whatever she is now. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but when I um, approached her about buying the practice, she was open to it and really what she loves most is seeing her patients and so she's still there a couple days a week seeing patients and and she was happy to do that so it has been a transition I say it was a good time of transition for her because right when I bought the practice COVID hit so she got to to step away with that a little bit she had been through the flood so I feel like that's enough you don't want to have to go through the flood and rebuilding and then deal with COVID um yeah but yeah so so she's still there seeing patients and and it's really nice to be able to work together it, yeah, and she's there if you have questions, yes. and and uh, even though you grew up in it, I'm sure things come up that you're like, "Hey, mom, uh, yes, <laughs> what did you do in this situation?" Yeah. So you mentioned COVID, and uh, I would imagine that was quite the adjustment for an industry like yours. Tell tell me, kind of, um, you know. Didn't you just purchase it when COVID hit? So I bought the practice January 1st of 2020. So I think Mm. I had, you know, two and a half months under my belt before COVID hit. And we thought we were preparing for, you know, a two-week shutdown. Yeah. Which, obviously, it was a lot longer than that. Yeah, two weeks to flatten the curve. I remember that. (laughs) Um, So that was a lot to learn as far as just how do we adjust from here? How can we still see our patients and serve our patients? And we still wanted to be there so, you know, people could pick up glasses and contacts. Or if you had an eye emergency or something in your eye, we didn't, you know, want you to have to go to an urgent care. So we were still open for those things. And then also having to adjust for employees of, you know, how can we keep everyone safe? How can we keep everybody with a job? So all that was was very stressful just trying to keep up with the news every day and the new mandates that came out, you know, for healthcare providers and, and all those things that we should follow. Yeah. So it was was pretty stressful. Your your husband was also in a field where they got kind of 
thrown through the ringer a little bit. Exactly. You had neither of us imagine a time that we'd both be at home being like, we can't go to work today. <laughs> we, yeah. we didn't expect that. Thankfully, you know, we're a little bit on the other side of it, better than it was, and, and that's a good thing. Yes. So uh, hopefully it'll just continue to improve. Now, let's get into all the great services y'all offer at Louisiana Eye Care. And the first thing I want to talk about is a program y'all call Infancy. Tell me about so that. Too. So it's anywhere from six months to one year old that we do free eye exams for babies. It's really great because we can evaluate things like making sure they weren't born with cataracts, making sure the health of the eye is good. Um, sometimes you will find a little bit of a glasses prescription at that point. Um, but Dr. Baker has even found, she has she has a um, video on it, but a retinoblastoma, which is cancer in the eye in oh. an infant. Wow. So that was life and in, in vision saving for them. So it's really just to check on the health of everything. Also, sometimes, too, you want to check on eye turns and glasses prescriptions. But making sure you can rule out congenital cataracts is really great. It's just a great program to be able to provide. I would say so. And yeah. how important is it that... that children of that age start to get these eye exams very important and if not at that point i would definitely say around two to three years old before you start preschool some of the eye conditions or eye prescriptions we want to catch at an early age while the eye is still developing so yeah. that if we get them in glasses even if they still have to wear glasses later but at least the eye can develop to see 2020 yeah so yeah so yeah good. having an eye exam at a young age is is very helpful yeah i bet yours is going to get one even earlier than that <laughs> I actually haven't checked them yet, and I keep I keep meaning to. I need to. <laughs> yes, you do. <laughs> so you also offer diabetic eye exams. And um, for those that may be unfamiliar with what that is, kind of tell me about that. So in diabetics, it's really the only place, the retina is the only place that we can check the health of the blood vessels without obviously having to, you know, do too much of an in-depth procedure. So it's nice that we can actually see the blood vessels. And checking the health of the blood vessels in the eye will give you a picture of how the blood vessels are doing throughout the body, like in the kidneys and other places in the body. So we want to look at the blood vessels and make sure that there's no leaky blood vessels, that there's no blood or fluid leaking from them. And that'll kind of give us an idea of how, how the rest of the body is doing. So gotcha. that's really what we're checking for. Awesome. And you treat uh, a variety of eye conditions, kind of let's cover those, some of the eye conditions. Yes, yeah, something common here would be taking metal out of the eye. So we call that foreign body. So yeah, we remove anything that gets in the eye, metal that rusts really quickly. So taking the rust out. Um, of course, we treat eye infections, glaucoma. We'll monitor cataracts and send out for that whenever it's time for cataract surgery. Yeah, Macular degeneration. A lot of a lot of eye things, and it is important when you get debris. I would imagine you could scratch your retina pretty your, easily yes, trying to cornea. clean it yourself. Yes, exactly, and there's a certain layer in the cornea you don't want to go past, or it'll leave a scar. Um, oh. and so you you want to be gentle when you remove things. So yes, coming to see us is definitely best, especially in the case that it, it's metal or something like that. Yeah, and and uh, I mean it's your eyes. It's uh, there's it's just a major aspect of your body that you really don't want to play around with. No. Um, so although you don't perform like LASIK and cataract surgeries, correct. you do do post-op things with LASIK and cataract, correct? Correct. So the way we see our patients is um, typically you start developing cataracts in your 50s. It just kind of comes along with age, but we'll watch those cataracts. And when they start affecting your vision and you can't see well, even with your corrective glasses or your contact lenses, at that point, we'll refer out for cataract surgery. And then we do all your post-op visits for you. So you're, there's like a one-day post-op, a one-week, and a one-month um, post-op. So we gotcha. We'll follow up. Very good. Very good. Now, eye infections. Um, let's talk about those real quick. Yes. Uh, Great subject, and when I think of eye, inpe eye infections, I'm th I think of like pink eye stuff like that. Would so, that be considered? So there's a there's a whole range. So I guess you could kind of refer to them as red eye, but with pink eye, it can be bacterial, it can be viral, mm -hmm. um, and then it can also be kind of like inflammation in the eye. So it kind of depends on what part of the eye is either infected or inflamed. 
the bacterial, like the pink eye you'd think of with kids where it's kind of like goopy, that's yeah. more bacterial. Viral is a little bit more tricky. Sometimes it takes time to run its course, but we can actually do a betadine treatment in office that decreases the viral load to try and help shorten the course of the virus. Yeah. Um, so that's helpful as well. But there's a whole range of things that I would say fall under like a, a red eye. Yeah. That you get. Yeah. What about like dry eyes syndrome? Oh, or? dry eyes. What is that about? Oh, so... You can have dry eyes for a multitude of reasons. And honestly, we've been seeing it more even now since COVID because everybody's spending so much time staring at a computer or a screen oh, and blinking point. less. Didn't think about so that. So we're seeing dry eye a lot more, but it can be hormone related. There are glands that line your lids and lashes and they put the oil in your tear film. Sometimes it can be those glands not functioning as well. Or it can be the liquid part of your tears where you're not just producing as much of the aqueous portion of the tear film. So there's a lot that we can do. Unfortunately, a lot of times it's managing dry eye, but we do have treatment for dry eye, whether it's getting those glands functioning better or having you on a prescription drop for dry eye. Interesting. She knows her stuff when it comes to eyes, y'all. Well, that, that one's a frustrating <laughs> one because it, it affects your quality of life and then it even affects your vision where you have to kind of like keep blinking to clear things up or you wonder why at the end of the day your vision's so blurry or your eyes are just tired. It's It kind of affects affects everything. Yeah. So, okay, here's, here's kind of the meat and potatoes of this. For people out there that um, I, I want to get to some of the signs that maybe you may need an eye exam or something like yes. that. And obviously, okay, I totally need one. I'm going to tell y'all <laughs> now because what I do now is I pull papers away from yes. me so they're not blurry anymore. Look, I'm 47. I've made it this long wow, without contacts, without any sort of eyeglasses, and literally I almost brag about my vision. <laughs> that's amazing. You know, I used to because I had great vision. Um, yeah, but I noticed lately I'm doing this. Um, that's an obvious sign that maybe I need an eye exam, right? Yes. I, it's so tough because there are certain things like glaucoma. Um, if you have glaucoma, you're not going to have any signs and symptoms of that until very late in, really? in stage. So there's oh, just no that's... way to know. So it's always it's always good to at least get the health of your eye checked. Um, but that is something we call presbyopia, where you just kind of start to lose the ability to focus as well up close. Mm -hmm. And it might start out like fine print. You're looking at a medicine bottle or just things up close. And yes. you can kind of make do for a while. You can hold things further yeah. away. But you might start to notice like eye strain, eye fatigue, a dull headache at the end of the day having to hold things further away. And at least there's an easy solution for that. We could do glasses or contact lenses. Yeah. So yeah, that is, that is a good example of one. And would that be in a situation like that? Would that be like, you're probably looking at reading glasses, I guess you'd call them or. So it kind of depends on your lifestyle for what, what you'd like to do. Typically for that, we'd say progressive lenses so that you just have something that you can leave on. Yeah. And that's where the lens progressively changes to where you have your distance vision at the top. And then as the lens as you go towards the middle of the lens, you have like your arm's length um, distance of prescription. Maybe it's a like a computer that you're looking at. And then as you go to the bottom of the lens, it gets stronger. So if you're holding something closer up, like a piece of paper, it's more in focus there. So that's that's easier. You can have a pair of near vision only glasses with your prescription in it. Most people don't have most people have a little bit of prescription in the distance, even if you could still see 2020, but that factors into your up close prescription. So if you have your up close prescription in a pair of glasses, you could still use them like you do readers, but that way you'd, you'd be seeing more clearly and you'd be looking through the correct prescription up close. So you could do that where you just take them on and off. Yeah, I think I need to quit being hard-headed. <laughs> <laughs> or for some people that hate glasses, we have multifocal contact lenses. And that's something you can just put in your eye and it helps you see distance and up close. And that's a really nice option to have too. I think, yeah. I'd have to like try on glasses too. That maybe glasses. Yeah. I mean, I'm not against glasses. It's just like I'm giving in at that point. I think you look good in glasses. I'm accepting it. <laughs> <laughs> so you, but, you made it this far. That's pretty impressive. Uh, yeah. I mean, that's, that's right. That's right. So, um, let's talk, um, routine eye exams which yes. is something obviously y'all do how first of all how often should people do those should it be when they're only having a problem or no we recommend dilated eye exams or at least where we check the health of the inside your eyes yearly mostly because like we said it's hard to know you know if you have glaucoma there would be no signs a lot of times you can find things inside the eye we call them a nevus it's kind of like a, a freckle on the inside of your eye and you want to watch that just like you watch a freckle on the skin you want to watch and make sure that it doesn't change in size and shape and elevation because it could possibly be a melanoma so those are just examples of things that you just would never know were there 
unless it was affecting a part of your eye that affected your vision. Um, so, so definitely having dilated eye exams is very helpful. Diabetic eye exams, you can check the health of the blood vessels. will tell you a lot there, but also in things like high blood pressure, um, that we also see signs of high blood pressure inside the eye. Really? Yes. Wow. See, I'm learning all kinds of stuff today, (laughs) and hopefully y'all are too. And look, this is something that people don't put a lot of thought into unless they have a problem, right? right? I mean, your eyes, you see everything, you're good. Right. And uh, and what I'm hearing here is sometimes you can catch things before. Before they, they become, become a major exactly. issue. Exactly. And uh, and so annual eye exams would be what you recommend there. Yes. Excellent. So uh, let's talk insurance for a second. Okay. Insurance is a is a big topic for eyes because even even when people have insurance for eyes, it's it's typically not like medical insurance where you know you pay a thirty dollar deductible and everything's covered. Um, it's a little more of a cost to that. Um, so let's cover that real quick as far as the. I guess do y'all take pretty much all insurances or. It is so tough when it comes to eye care and insurance because yeah. I think we're one of the only professions that has a vision. We Really, it's a vision discount plan mm-hmm. separate from your health insurance. Mm-hmm. The good news is a lot of people don't realize that they can get eye exams under their health insurance, especially if there's something like medical that we find, which typically, you know, there's at least, you know, some dry eye, maybe yeah. cataracts. Any of those things would fall under under medical condition for you to be able to use your medical insurance for your eye exam. Yeah. A vision insurance is really more like a vision discount plan. We can only use that on routine eye exams. And typically somebody doesn't just have myopia or just have just need glasses. Typically there's like we talked about a lot more things to the eye health. Yeah. Um, but vision insurance is in that in that routine case where it's just a glasses prescription and we don't find anything else wrong with the eye. And then they do give you a discount towards glasses and contacts. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a lot of times you can use your medical insurance for any testing that we need to do or any eye exams that have something medical related. Interesting. Interesting. And I want to back up for a second because I, I wanted to ask this earlier, but with say premature babies, yes. do they typically have eye, do you see more eye problems with those than full term babies? Yes. And typically premature babies will have an eye exam in the hospital. Um, there's something called retinopathy or prematuria. Um, and they may even see a retina specialist. It's somebody who specializes in just the retina. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Okay, so there's that answer. I actually had someone message me on Facebook really? when they saw you were coming on and said, would you uh, ask her this? Yes. I don't know if, if she was trying to settle an argument or what. <laughs> <laughs> would you ask her this? <laughs> yes, I will. So I did. Um, and there's your answer on that. Now, it is worth not- noting uh, in the realm of insurance that if you, let's say you own your own business, you don't you know, have insurance, um, you do offer pay packages. Yes, we do. Tell me about those. And we will offer um, a 15% private pay discount on any glasses or contact lenses. But we also do have a private pay option for um, our eye exams, which includes our Optos, which is a retinal imaging system that we can use to see the inside, the health of your eyes without your eyes being dilated. So that's nice as well. Wow. Yeah, that is. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Now, um, (laughs) you'll probably laugh at me for asking this, but let's say somebody comes in and they say, I'm going to do an eye exam. Is it still the typical cover one eye, read the chart or has it changed? Yeah, we do that. Yes, we do. We'll check your eye pressure. Um, We'll check your vision for sure. Check the health of the inside of your eyes. We'll check like your peripheral vision, check your eye movements. But yes, there is still the cover the eye and read the chart. Yeah. When I started working with my mom, Dr. Baker, we had the projector screen. So you didn't have a whole lot of letters to choose from. You could kind of memorize them. But good news is now they're they're like little TVs. We can change up the letters for you. (laughs) Yeah, people memorize the letters. A little bit, yes. (laughs) Yeah. That's hilarious. And, you know, it's similar to, I guess, a hearing exam. Remember the old headphones? Yes. And you put them on and then deep. 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 Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was fun. Um, now, an- another service you provide is that you offer many varieties of, like, frames and things like that for sale. And some, some well-known brands like Oakley, mm-hmm. um, you offer frames. And uh, my question would be, let's say, I mean, frames are like style, right? Mm-hmm. Um you want some good stylish frames and let's say you've had the same glasses for 10 years and that leopard print ain't in style no more (laughs) or whatever. Um, and you want to just change your lenses into a new frame that you go to buy from Mm -hmm. you. Do y'all do that there? Yeah, absolutely. 
Yeah, you can put um, your prescription lenses in a lot of different frames. It's funny. It's like glasses are almost like a piece of jewelry, jewelry, but it's like the one thing that you wear every day. So yeah. some people have them just for different, like you said, to change up different styles. Yeah. Prescription sunglasses especially are Costa's, Maui Gems, Oakley. Those will give you really great optics and, and prescription sunglasses. But, yeah, we do all of that. Yeah, yeah, excellent. And I'll tell you, speaking from someone, I don't wear glasses yet, but my <laughs> whole family does. And um, and I can't tell you how many frames get broken in my house every six yes. months. I mean, yep. just from, you know, yeah, kids. Yeah, I mean, we need to get you some of the little spring hinges that are, yes, that are flexible. Yes, absolutely, because it's like uh, – not much time goes by before I hear the wife say, where's the little screwdriver? And I'm oh, like, I know no. what that means. Yep. <laughs> Always come in. We can work on it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So um, tell us a little bit about the staff that you have at Louisiana Eye Care. How valuable is your staff? Our staff is everything. Um, so I know you said earlier that it's important to us how we treat our patients and what our patients mean to us but that's kind of what we want everybody to experience or to feel is that when you come in we really care about you and take good care of you and hopefully provide good service that's all, what we're always striving for our staff a lot of them have been with us for a very long time um but they just it's really great how much they care about our patients and how much we try and go above and beyond to care for them so we have our opticians that have been there for a very long time. Um, one of our opticians has been there for over 10 years. My office manager has been there for over 10 years. Um, and another office manager that's been there for, I think, 18 years. Wow. Yep. But that's a, a lot of good a experience. A lot of good experience. Yeah. And they've come, oh, you know, a long way to see our, our profession and our office grow over, over that course of time. Yeah. But Wonderful I, ladies over yes, there. And most of them are all, you know, from Denham or from Livingston, but they're all just so sweet and so thankful for them yeah i went to your ribbon cutting you met did. many of them and just awesome awesome ladies over there and uh and you had one of the best ribbon cuttings i've ever been to oh, i mean it was great <laughs> and they were giving away some legit stuff y'all through uh, them drawings and they, my staff they did great um our staff put the whole thing together and Haley, she's our practice support specialist. They reached out to different people. Like you, you saw, we had cookies there. Yes. And we had um, just different people from Livingston come out. Yeah, it, it was, was really great. nice. I enjoy, I enjoyed every great. minute of that. Now um, you're active on social media, which is one of the ways you can kind of learn the personality of your office. Yes. Um, whoever does your social media does a great Haley, job. She's great. Yeah. Very, very uh, cute uh, social media site where she does a lot of different things. They're standing on boxes and they're doing mm -hmm. all these, but, um, but something that really catches your eye and you can kind of see the personality. It seems like a fun environment, it is. uh, which I mean, it's eyes. So you got to make it fun, right? You got, <laughs> <laughs> you got to make that a fun environment for everybody. So they, uh, check them out. And the reason I bring that up is they do a lot of giveaways on their Thank Facebook, you. some good giveaways. And uh, so go give them a like and uh, and follow them and yes. take advantage of those giveaways. Facebook, Instagram, and they even have me doing some TikTok these days. And I say, you just tell me what to do. I'll do it. <laughs> TikTok. Very, very entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I fought TikTok for so long and I'm like, man, I, I was wrong. I, yeah. I always looked at it as something like kids do. And then. It got to the point, I'm like, this is kind of a legit platform yeah, as fun. much as I hate to admit it. It, but, it yeah. makes it fun when we have to film some TikToks. Really yes, nice. yes, I've seen some of y'all's are great. <laughs> um, it's also too important and important to mention that you're a member of the LP Chamber of Commerce. Yes. Uh, which I, I was, I'm an ambassador with the chamber, and uh, which is what led me to your ribbon cutting. Um, but you're also a part of Livingston Young Professionals, which mm -hmm. is a kind of like a division of the Chamber of Commerce. And How do they, you like that? They always have fun things going on. Lately, I haven't been able to go with the baby, but sure. I always see like they do a tacky Christmas sweater party and they do just meetups and happy hours and lunch. And I really feel like the Chamber does such a great job providing opportunities and community for young professionals in Livingston. They really do. They really do. I agree a hundred percent on that. And I, I've always told uh, April, she needs to have an, a Livingston old professionals. <laughs> <laughs> and I would join because the young you, professionals y'all you having so much fun. <laughs> I love it. Um, in your questionnaire, I also asked you, obviously our namesake at leader 
And I asked you to define what you thought was a leader. Have to read this verbatim too. Okay. Um, so you said, I'd define a leader as someone who's willing to do hard things and make hard decisions. Someone who cares for their team and is willing to work with them and alongside them to make things successful. A leader is open to suggestions and criticism and is comfortable with things being uncomfortable. A leader is someone looking forward or a leader is someone who is looking forward, wondering how we can do things better and how we can implement those things. A leader recognizes and cheers on the success of others around them. A leader develops other leaders. That's probably the best definition of a leader that I've ever had on this show. So <laughs> I don't know what you win, but you win something. A bottle Thank of water. You, <laughs> you want a bottle of water. Perfect. But I'm telling you, that is exactly how I would say a leader was. Um, at the end of the day, that's what they do. They develop other leaders. Mm -hmm. um, so I just want to shout that out. You, well, you very well said. Um, so someone that is hearing us talk today, uh, hopefully they're going to say, I want to go do some business with Louisiana Eye Care. <laughs> they seem like awesome people. Um I know you have a website, so we, we want to mention that. What's your website? It's LouisianaEyeCare.com. And you also have a Facebook and an Insta and a TikTok. Yes. And they're, yes. they're all the same. Yep. And if you go to just Louisiana Eye Care on Facebook or Instagram, it'll link to our website. Awesome. Yeah. So, uh, folks, go check that out. Um, and also, we need to mention where you're located on Range Avenue yes. for the one or two people <laughs> that may not know. I'm sure everybody's passed there a million times. Yes, but. right next door to Sherwin Williams, across the street from the Sonic. There you go. So, right, pretty much in the center of Range Avenue, right yes. there, and and uh, conveniently located. They got plenty of parking. Yes. Uh, just a amazing business over there at Louisiana Eye Care. Um, did you have fun today? I did. Thank yeah. you for having me. It was great. It, well, I, I'll tell you what, I learned a lot. I'm about to make an appointment, folks. <laughs> <laughs> That's how much I learned. So, um, so anytime you want to come back, you want to talk eyes, we're willing to Thank have you, you here. And, uh, and I think it's an important subject and I think people don't take enough time out really to learn. Like we discussed earlier, eyes are something that if you don't really have a problem, you don't think about them. Exactly. But obviously, you can catch some problems early and, and maybe avoid some yes, issues. Absolutely. Yeah. I do want to read some fun facts that oh, I had you uh, okay. I had you do, and the first one was hilarious. So oh. uh, I asked you if you purchased a yacht, what would you name it? You said, I don't know about that, but my husband says if I were ever to get a tattoo, it would be a jar of almond butter. You're an almond butter fan, I would I imagine. I am an almond butter <laughs> fan, and he always, he always laughs at me, and he walks by, and I'm just eating out the jar of almond butter, so <laughs> it's a problem. <laughs> it's an issue. Well, uh, I love it. So what job would you want did you want when you were 12 years old you said a pharmacist yes, yes. you want to be a pharmacist when I you did. were 12 awesome uh if you could have any superpower what would it be you said teleporting because you love to travel I do. that would be an awesome superpower for sure and you're not the first one to say that one and if you could travel anywhere in the world where would you go <laughs> i could couldn't agree more with this switzerland and you do some hiking out there yes. you like to hike i do in mountains yeah. and that that sounds great. Yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> Actually, me and my wife did some hiking in Alaska, and oh, that was I can't imagine. Yeah, it was Beautiful. awesome. Was it cold though? Yeah, um, yes. It. We went in the summertime on a cruise, okay. and it was still cold. Yeah. Um, especially as you increased in elevation, yeah. and when you don't know really where it ends, <laughs> you keep walking, and I'm and like, I think we're at the top. Yeah. Um. Yeah, and then you got to hurry right. back down before the boat leaves, but um, but. <laughs> Yeah, that was really fun. Go to Alaska one day. It's beautiful. Been. Oh, it's beautiful that. over there. Um, so I do want to thank everyone out there for viewing and listening to Local Leaders, the podcast. Please continue to like, comment, subscribe, and share Local Leaders on all your social media. Please remember to go see Louisiana Eye Care on Facebook. Thank Give you. them a like. Uh, and they post so much great information on just eye care in general. Uh, it is definitely worth the visit and worth the like. I do want to thank all our sponsors, including Trisha Johnston, Realtor, William Waldrop of TWFG Insurance, BJ Pond, Fit Blends, Denim Springs, 
Black Sheep Creative SR Enterprise Painting, Idell Lane Spa and Boutique, Fit Body Boot Camp. We could do none of this without all of those folks. And if you want some information on sponsoring or appearing on the show, reach out to me at Jim at LocalLeadersOfPodcast.com. Until next time, I'm Jim Chapman reminding you, love your community, support local business just like Louisiana Eye Care, and keep leading. Thank you very much. Thank you. Black Sheep Creative understands the importance of digital marketing and your return on your investment. It's their aim to provide professional web and graphic design services at a price point that smaller businesses and startups can afford. Get in touch with them on the web at blacksheepcreative.com. BJ Pawn and Gun in Denham Springs wants to buy your unwanted gold jewelry, gold coins, and gold bullion. With 30 years of experience operating in the Livingston Parish area, BJ Pawn wants to be your source when selling your gold. So stop by BJ Pawn today for a no obligation offer. BJ Pawn, a proud sponsor of Local Leaders, the podcast. <laughs>